And now it's time for more of Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's Talk Hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock God, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's Talk Hookup right here on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the radio network. Pete Gray here with Rock God, Rick Maxa. Hey, we have a couple great guests. Scientists are <laughs> aboard today. Yes. Lyle and Elena. Uh, they're fisheries biologists. They're experts in many, many aspects of uh our fishery yeah and they're fishermen too and and hunters and yeah. great people and great yeah. friends and this has just yeah. been an awesome show yeah. Lie, I, I, of course uh elena works for sport fishing association of california with ken there and uh does a lot of the stuff within the the san diego well actually the fleet all up and down the california coast so uh a lot of information today this has been fantastic yeah and like you say there's so much cool stuff to cover from every angle from fishing in the bay catching a spotty to calicos to swordfish and bluefin and more and if you want to join us in the second hour we'd love to hear from you 833-288-0973. That's how you reach us on Let's Talk Hookup this morning. Not only are we taking your phone calls, sharing all this great information, thanks to Lyle and Elena, but also giving away a great prize. One lucky caller at the end of today's show is going to get to go fishing on a full day trip on board the San Diego at a C4 Sport Fishing. A fantastic opportunity. Again, it's been a very busy morning. The phones are still packed, 100% solid, but we have lots of time coming up in the second hour. That's 833 833- Three two eight eight zero nine seven three. Let's continue with our catch report. We got the man, our surf guru, Gundy Gunderson's on the line. What's up, Gundy? Hey, how's it going, you guys? I love the show. Love the science. Yeah, it's good this stuff. Been cool. Yeah. So, what's going on in the surf? Well, you know, we were t- last week we kind of got wiped out by that big swell, and uh, I was predicting as soon as that swell come down, the bite pick up, and that's sure. Surely what happened this week, more terrific fishing, lots of different species and reports there. I think the good Corbina fishing was probably the highliner, but calico bass, white sea bass, yelping croaker, spotfin, halibut, uh, opali, sargo, just a whole leopard shark, seven gill, all, all, all things going, you know, and uh, just terrific fishing, warm water, just what we like to see. Hook, line, sinker reported Good bite on a reef peaches up there. Campus Point in particular, kind of a rocky spot, uh, a main point, so you got a lot of things going on there. And the anglers throwing squid tip swim baits, scoring good numbers of calico bass and some nice fish, some two to four pound class fish there. And the bonus has been white sea bass. Uh, one of the anglers on a grunion pattern swim bait took a 14 pound fish, uh, nice. fished along the reef there. And uh, that was my report this week. Lots of white sea bass in the shallows up and down the coast. And you, you kind of keep, you got to keep that in mind when you're fishing those reef beaches. Uh, you, you know, you can get anywhere from a short one to a, you know, 40 pound fish. It's uh, something, something to always consider inside there. Wiley's reported excellent mixed bag fishing. The reef beaches have been kicking out calico bass, yelping croaker, halibut, few legal, but mostly short white sea bass. Cup bait has been hot there anchovy or sardine doesn't really matter um swim baits also producing uh, a shop regular there soaking mussel at a, a spot called latigo took several nights opali and sargo so some of those smaller reef fish on the bite big fish in seal beach reported good corina action along sunset and bolsa chica beaches the sand crabs have been inconsistent so most guys are scoring with the bloodworms and that's been the, uh, that's been another trend uh, most most of the best corbina fishing has been on the worms, um, either lugworms or bloodworms. Still halibut there along Shoreline Drive, Cherry Beach. Uh, they posted a 30 and a 33 inch fish. Both were taken on live smelt. Uh, drop shot flukes also working well. Catch them tackle reported hot corbina action off river jetties, the street jetties. Hogan's and Dana Point reported good corbina catches off State Park and Rivieras. Again, the worm bite's been best with lugworms and bloodworms producing there. And uh, some nice sea bass taken off Cotton's Point. 
and uh, I, you know, that's my uh, neck of the woods there. And I'm, I tell you, there's a lot of sea bass off that point there. Metallic sardine patterns, flash minnows have been working for the guys. The bonus has been some real quality calico bass in the mix. It's a not heavily fished area, but if it's worth your time to go down there exploring. And finally, North County beaches, terrific Corbin action, South Oceanside, Army Navy Academy, South Carlsbad, bloodworms have been the top bait. Uh, four pound, two ounce Corbina was the top fish. Guy slurped a few uh, ghost shrimp and caught the big fish on a ghost shrimp. And then they're also seeing white sea bass outside Ponto there. So if you're a sea bass guy, your ears ought to be wiggling. Cause there's yeah, nice that sounds like it, Gundy. <laughs> well, hey, sure appreciate all that good stuff and uh, makes you want to go catch sea bass right now. Thanks a lot for that, uh, Gundy, and we will talk to you next Sunday. Uh, great show, guys. Really enjoying it. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Thanks. Gunny. Appreciate that. Well, that's going to wrap up at the catch board today. Hey, Gamakatsu set out to develop a hook that was light enough for your live bait to swim naturally, yet strong enough to handle your next uh, handle your next trophy bluefin or yellowfin. The answer: the Gamakatsu Nautilus Heavy Duty. The Gamakatsu Nautilus HD is available with a solid ring or a standard hook. Get the Gamakatsu Nautilus and Nautilus HD now at selected tackle shops. Indeed. Let's go on to jump those jam-packed phone lines with Lyle and Elena. Eric and Poway is up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Eric. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, buddy? Hey, I wanted to ask about that uh, swordfish fishery. I, I know it's kind of a little bit expensive to get into. Um, can you use more than, um, you know, how much would, like, a whole setup cost? And what do you use for bait? And can you use more than, like, um, uh, one reel and rod and reel for that? Or what's, uh, what, what seems to be the best... Uh, best way to get started in that short fish fishery i mean is it best to you know like in the winter months is that the best time to be fishing for that stuff so when's the when's the prime time lyle for the sword the southern california swordfish fishery you can catch them uh almost all year round i mean the season starts in summertime and it goes all the way through uh late winter so you you can literally catch them almost um almost every month of the year. Uh, most of the fishery information that I was talking about was specific to the commercial fishery on the West Coast. But in the last year or so, um, the recreational guys have been really successful um, uh, adapting some of the methods and learning and doing a lot of trial and error and catching quite a, quite a few swordfish. I think 2019, we saw a big bump in swordfish landings. And that's one of the things we'd like to learn more about is just just how effective uh, the fishery's been. Uh, a bunch of my friends have caught multiple swordfish. It's been really, really cool to see. Um, but as far as how much it costs to, to get set up, um, you know, Rick might have a, a better yeah, idea. Yeah, Ricky's probably sets a lot of, of people that. up on the, <laughs> in the shop and fishermen's landing tackle. So what are you looking at, Rick? Uh, the the one real fortunate thing is that it does require somewhat specific gear because, like Lyle says, you're fishing deep. You know, you're 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 fishing for a big fish that you know requires relatively heavy tackle and also the ability to fish down you know a thousand feet or or more potentially um and and still have enough line that you know you're, you don't have no you know you don't have zero line left on the spool when you get a bite the good news is because we've had such a successful big bluefin fishery the last few years a lot of people private boaters have made the investment in a big piece of gear and for the most part, the same rod and reel that you're you're targeting your your biggest bluefin tuna with will definitely work for a swordfish rig. And as you became you know super into it and wanting to get specialized gear, that that of course is available too. But for a lot of us, you know the big rod and reel that we bought fishing a yummy flyer or trying to catch a big bluefin on a frozen flying fish will work just fine for swordfish. But I would say that the best bet is a reel of a 50 size or better. It can be done with smaller tackle, but best with a 50 sized reel, like a Tiagra or a Talica, something like that. And a six and a half to seven foot rod. In a perfect world, it was relatively light in the tip section because the, the bites aren't super aggressive. Um, but then obviously plenty of backbone to deal with a, you know, potentially a multi hundred pound fish. And the best thing to do is just to head over to Fisherman's Landing Tackle, who specializes in gear like that, and just get an, a feel for what you'll need to invest. It is a oh yeah, there's an it's investment. Not, it's there's not no cheap, question. but I would never yeah. hide that. And 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 and, and, and you know the, the leaders you need, and you know um, it, the bait thing is not that big a deal. You know they they sell pre-made, uh, pre 
pre-hooked baits the, that are, are, are relatively inexpensive. The beauty of the, the way that things work now is you can go and get a lot of information from a good tackle store or a good source like that. If you're buying from scratch, realistically, your investment's probably going to be around $1,000. I mean, okay. yes, it can be done for less than that, but by the time you add all the nickel and dime stuff, you know, you're buying a lot of money just in Power Pro. You know, it yeah. takes a lot to fill the <clears> reel. And so your, your investment's going to be around $1,000. And the guys that are crazy into it, I mean, we have super high-end, two-speed electric reels that are four grand. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it can be from something you already have in the garage that we are happy to help you adapt to it all the way up to buying super fancy tackle. And most people are, you know, usually somewhere in between there. Right. Hey, very good. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Bart Hall is on the line. Good morning, Bart. Good morning, Pete and Rick. And good morning, hey, Lyle and Elena. How are you? Morning, Bart. Hi, Bart. Hi, Elena. Well, of course, you know, uh, Lyle and Elena are, are very famous, and, and we're lucky to have them. But, of course, <laughs> Lyle's, Lyle's most important job, however, was that he was the uh, youngest member of the Fred Hall team to work the trot pond. How old <laughs> oh, he's going to bring that up. How old? How old were you? I, I started when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> you started at the trout pond when you were 12? I yes. started when I was still allowed to fish at the trout pond. <laughs> ah, and, and, and were you that guy that used to like, when you'd catch the trout, you'd wanted to dissect it? Is that kind of that, that's mm-hmm. where you all started? Yeah, I may have been in the back of the pond there doing <laughs> dissecting fish. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> 12 yeah. years and, old and working the trout pond. Oh, my gosh. It- it's been so wonderful working for the Fred Hall family every year for the past 30 some odd years it's been just such an incredible experience i mean it helped me get to know the entire industry and the and the entire recreational fishing community in southern california yeah yeah we're we're lucky to have lyle in the position he's in you know someone who's an avid fisherman and a hunter it's it's great however thank uh, you he and elena are virus phobic and they did miss a hell of a fourth of july party at convict lake resort <laughs> oh we're sorry we're sorry yeah. Bart. we'll make it up to you we, we so, had we had a great time you know uh ryan and shannon door were there from adventure and camping oh, uh that cool. was the first that was the first fourth of july that ryan had had off in 15 years and he celebrated it hard it was great and wow. uh there, they're doing great up there, by the way. If you need to, if you are interested in doing anything with adventure and camping, you need to call them right away because uh, they're all, they're kicking it. It's off the charts. So doing really well. Oh yeah, no, I I tried to get in and and they're 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 booked. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you the, he says we do have space in August and September. So uh, you yeah. want to get in? Uh, it's it's uh, adventure and camping. dot com. Such great people and such an incredible opportunity to. And and yes, Lyle and Elena, you could social distance in your own camper with adventure and camping for sure. Yeah, yeah. You could have social distance. You could have social distance at the party too, except maybe at the bar. But other than hey, 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 Rick, did you get your invitation to this big party that Bart's talking about? You know, I've been, I, I I've mean, been mine must have so got lost in the I'm mail. Sure I don't know. Was, My, yeah, both sure of ours must have got lost sure in the mail. I, I never got. You that. I mean, the mail's not going. <laughs> <laughs> well bart it, glad, glad you had fun in the sierras how was the fishing well here i'm going to give you a real report actually uh it was slow when we were there but the weather has heated up it was a full moon um it, but it's still been slow this week as well but the weather it's still been hot up there uh, also the fishing game department has been sending out only single guys to stock in their trucks and they can only do it where it's safe so probably the Stocking isn't as good as it could have been, but but it's still big fish were caught all over the place. Big fish from Crowley all the way up uh, through the June Lake Loop. Um, eight and nine pounders were common through wow. through every fishery up there. Of course, you realize you know, three weeks ago they had that 19 pounder out of Silver Lake. So not a lot of uh, uh, stringers, but a lot of big fish were caught. If you, if you knew what to do and where to go and what you were doing. I apparently did not know because I did not catch any big fish. <laughs> but, uh, but, but it's been pretty good. Um, I, I think it's going to be fine now because uh, Mono County is, in, is continuing to stock uh, over and above the Department of Fish and Wildlife. And, of course, the uh, big 10-ton delivery that goes into the Mammoth Lake has started now with John Erty 
and they're, wow. they're putting in 10 tons of trout over the summertime. So fishing up there should be really good for, for the next few months. And, and I advise you to go up and have, it was, the, it was the busiest 4th of July I've ever seen Pete. It was just, uh, really? I've never seen so many people in the Eastern Sierra. It was unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> wow. You couldn't drive through Bishop on the way home. It was bumper to bumper. You know? Really? Crazy. Wow, that's but, well. People want to get out, and and it, it sounds yeah, and, and and as we know, those of us that love the Eastern Sierra, you know, August, late August, September, best October, best time to go. In the falls when it's oh, yeah. absolutely the best. Well, yeah, a lot of fly sure. fishing, uh, uh, Pete. A lot of a lot of uh, fish were caught on flies. Nice, too. nice. Yeah. Well, Flying a bubble, sounds like a plan, no Bart. Well, well, glad you yeah. had fun, and uh, and. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be digging. I'll be maybe that you know that may, U.S. mail has been so slow. I'm sure, that's what it was. That's, what it was. Sure that's what it was. That invitation is probably coming any day. There's another yeah. one coming, but I got a question yeah. for Lyle because this is important. Uh, Lyle, the um, as you may know, but the three of the hatcheries in California got that uh, bacteria like a streptococcus, and they're going to have to close them down, kill all the fish, and start all over again. But but the one hatchery that didn't get it was Hot Creek Hatchery, which is right there where all these lakes are. I'm talking about. But the Fish and Wildlife mm-hmm. won't let Hot Creek Hatchery put fish up there. Why is that? Wow. Um, I have, honestly, I have no idea. Um, I hadn't heard about the outbreak in the other hatcheries uh, yeah, first. Really. I, I, I can't really think of a, of a reason why they, they wouldn't do that. I mean, pan, pandemic aside, uh, maybe those fish were were allocated to some other to some other watershed or some other lake uh i don't know oh okay huh. I, I thought you'd be the one to ask well I, i'll i'll keep asking around because i'm mm-hmm. i'm trying to figure that out it's right there you know i mean they, yeah they right there them. with good fish so hey bart hall thanks a lot and uh thanks for uh finding lyle and yeah. bringing him into our world we sure appreciate that and i'm sure he does too so so do i i was better fun right. to watch you bart absolutely sure. Thanks, Bart. Appreciate the call this morning. All right. Let's jump back into the phones. They're packed up. Richard calling us from Hawaii is up next on Let's Talk Hook Up. Hi, Richard. Welcome to the show. Or should we say aloha? Oh, welcome. Yeah, how are you? Hey, you know, um, I, I, I fish long line, and, and I used to harpoon swordfish. And normally, you don't make much money doing that. You know what I mean? Because hey, first they ban the plane, right, where you could, you could spot fish with. And then all of a sudden, the, the, the shark guys figured out that they could fit, catch swordfish with a drift net, which, you know, that's, that's all good. And, and then uh, it, it, was, it was pretty difficult to make any money, you know what I mean? Because that one year, the fish actually didn't even show. But then, then th- this thing with the, you know, the squid on the long line thing, they did a test at the aquarium up in Monterey, saying, "Okay, hey, um, we we got the we got the a hungry turtle in the tank, and we dropped a, a sardine and a, and a squid, and they say the, the the turtle went for for the the squid, and they're going, well, that's you know that's that's how we're going to decide what what bait they can fish with. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy. I mean, <laughs> you know, I hadn't heard no, about I, the tank trial." Oh no, that's that's how they decided what bait they could use, and, and just out of curiosity, all the swordfish that's getting eaten, I'm just curious, what country it comes from. Oh, great question. I mean, swordfish gets caught all over the world. Um, it comes through Taiwan. It comes through um, uh, South America. Most of the countries on the west coast of South uh, and Central America catch swordfish. Mexico catches swordfish. So it comes from all over. And that's one of the things that we're doing right now because the, the deep set buoy gear is, is really effective at just keying in on swordfish. We're um, testing the gear type right now in Chile and Peru where bycatch is even more of a concern than it is here. Um, to try and help uh, those fleets catch swordfish in a more uh, in a more efficient way, and um, that way we're not importing swordfish from places where where bycatch is still still a big deal. So swordfish can literally come from all over. The Atlantic has tons of swordfish. Obviously, both Canada and the U.S. catch them. Um, so yeah, they come from everywhere. 
So, Lyle, as far as worldwide regulations, now we know that uh, Intertropical Tuna Commission uh, regulates tuna catches. Uh, is there anybody that regulates swordfish catch? Uh, same same group. So, billfish and uh, tunas are are managed under one species group called HMS, highly migratory species. And those are all managed by NOAA, and the international discussions happen under the IATTC. So billfish gotcha. and tunas are, are managed under that um, um, umbrella. Un, under the same umbrella. All right. Hey, Richard, yeah. thanks for uh, calling us from Hawaii with an interesting perspective there. I appreciate the call this morning. All right, we're going to shift gears a little bit right now and talk to a, our buddy Brandon, who's uh, with Barnacle Security. Good morning, Brandon. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, great. Now, I have the barnacle system on my boat, uh, Field Research, and it's great. I can bring up a, a, a camera shot of the interior right now <laughs> on my cool. phone and uh, also it monitors so many other things. Well, uh, tell, us about the, tell us about the system. And first of all, I should say Elena's the one, your representative down here, and she's the one that introduced me to the system. And uh, That's right. Uh, Elena, uh, Elena, I like it. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Yeah, I, I'm Brandon and I both grew up in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, and um, I saw them posting on their social media a few years ago about his uh, the system, and I I got in touch and said you need to you need to get this down in Southern California because I know they've had you know success up in British Columbia, but Southern California the opportunity is extensive down here. So um, one thing led to another, and I introduced. Uh, you guys together and um, yeah I'm, I'm really excited to hear Brandon across the phone yeah so, absolutely so tell <laughs> yeah, us about your I, I, system absolutely yeah so it's a boat security and monitoring system that monitors your batteries your bilge pumps your shore power connection and we have a very strong focus on security so being able to monitor doorways hatches uh, we're even working with some laser sensors now, so if someone gets on your back deck, uh, you can trigger a siren, uh, get some photographs of that individual, and scare them off the boat. And uh, we've even had some wow. early success out in Europe where we caught a burglar on boat on a boat uh, in France and uh, managed to get that person apprehended, and that was very early on. But the whole system came about after my personal boat had an incident up here in Canada and my whole career had been developing uh, military security systems in the Middle East for the U.S. Air Force and uh, for the borders of countries, including the U.S.-Mexico border. So uh, when my boat had an incident, I, thought I took it upon myself to, to create a solution. And, uh, and here we are today. So really proud to be helping you, Pete, uh, protect your boat. And uh, really an honor to be on this show, by the way, too. Well, thank, thanks for having us. It, the system is, is amazing, and it works so Sounds well. Cool. You basically just download the Barnacle app. And I can I'm looking at it right now and it, it tells me my house battery and my starter battery voltage. Uh, my door is closed. So I know and I get an alert if it opens. Uh, it also says the heel angle of the boat. Uh, I can look at a photo that was taken uh, at a predetermined time. I can take a photo. And then the other thing, cool thing is it also has a geofence where if I move, I move my boat or somebody else moves my boat, I get an alert that the boat has moved outside this whatever size geofence that uh, I have there. And that's uh, that's important for uh, uh, and there's so and like you say, there's other things that you can put on it too. Um, uh, you can find out whether uh, your shore power is still working. I have cool. that. Um, there's there's I mean, there, there's a lot of different things you can do with the barnacle system. And, and the cool thing about it is it's pretty inexpensive. Right, Brandon? Yeah. Yeah. It's eight hundred ninety nine dollars. And then uh, the subscription works out to be about two hundred bucks U.S. Uh, for a year. And that's a global cellular plan. Uh, so we manage the SIM card. There's no changing SIMs when you cross borders. And uh, the system's worked across 20 countries now uh, with boaters that have crossed the Atlantic, for example. More sailors, of course. Wouldn't want to be taking a big sport fisher across the Atlantic. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, we've been uh, working very well, uh, especially down in the States and Mexico. It, 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 this is so cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm, no, it's I'm a great system. It, I, would, I, a... I was expecting you to say like 10 times that amount for... Because it's real time. I mean, Pete just yeah. showed me his phone. Oh, like, yeah, I'm looking, looking at it. Yeah. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, and every time I open my door, a photo gets taken. 
of whoever's coming inside the door. This is great. So, yeah. yeah, it's it, it's it's there. And there's and like I say, we're just scratching the surface of the potential of this system that you yeah. developed, Brandon. It's really fantastic. Absolutely. And uh, it's funny on the price piece, we've been selling into the Canadian Coast Guard, the Royal Canadian Navy, and uh, we, we don't have a military version of it yet. So we've been selling at that price to them as well. And they're just blown away that that's the same <laughs> price as a screw on board one of those boats. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, if somebody's interested in the system uh getting it how do we how do we get a hold of you brandon how do we how do we get that system yeah so you can google barnacle systems online or type in brnkl.io into your browser and uh yeah that's that's the easiest way but uh barnacle spelt properly into google will get you there as well okay so barnacle spelled the right way but the barnacle your barnacle name is spelled how b-r-n-k-l Okay. We had but to go type, uh, a little. We were going trendy on that one. Yeah, they. Yeah, you were. Um, and if if um, if somebody just types in regular Barnacle Security, uh, they would find yep. it in a Google search. Absolutely. Yeah. And then of course, uh, Elena will get together with you and uh, help you put a system into your boat. That's right. Yeah, I'm available. I'm and I'm obviously based in San Diego, so available to help anyone. All right. This is awesome. Fantastic. I really like it. It looks yeah, really it, good. No, it's it's a great system for sure. Brandon, thanks for joining us. Barnacle Systems, check it out. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's great, great security to know what's going on on yeah. your boat for sure. Thanks Perfect. a lot for joining Appreciate us this it. morning. All right. Yeah, take Let's care, guys. And, Bye-bye. All right. Thanks. Uh, let's go ahead and jump back in the phone. You got it. Well, they're still just packed. Absolutely solid. Sam in Irvine is up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Sam. Good morning. A great show. Uh, Especially Thanks, about the calico. That's, that's interesting. Hey, uh, yeah. my question is, um, abalone went up when I was a young man. I mean, there used to be ads on the radio for ab divers and everything like that. And, uh, you know, abalone was like super abundant. But, you know, it's hard to even hear anybody talk about diving for abalone. Is there, uh, are they gone? Is it, is it a fishery that can be, be brought back? Great. Great question. Um, abalone have had a tough go at things over the last, well, over the last century, really. They, um, they're really vulnerable to a lot of different stressors that get thrown at them. So um, historically, they were fished commercially, and that really impacted uh, populations. Then um, we learned that there was a pretty widespread virus that um, spread across the West Coast, for a number of different species uh, on a couple of different occasions. That really impacted uh, populations pretty severely. And then um, in the last five years with the, with the blob and the El Nino, those water temperatures that really jumped up, um, uh, you may have noticed that the kelp forest largely disappeared for a couple of years as a result of that warm water push. And abalone feed almost exclusively on kelp. And so when those kelp forests um, uh, uh, disappeared for a couple of years, luckily kelp forests are fairly resilient, but when they were gone for a couple of years, in many places, urchins took over and they've prevented the kelp from uh, growing back. And abalone haven't been able to, to feed on their, on their traditional food source. So that a lot of them ended up uh, starving to death. And there was a mass mortality event associated with that on the West Coast just in the last five years. So abalone have just had a number of different population impacts, and because they grow so slowly, it takes them a long time to recover. Uh, we are seeing signs of recovery in a few species in a few places, but um, in general, they're just very susceptible to these sorts of impacts. Yeah, and you don't see a season coming up in the near future. You know, we've done, uh, and TNC in particular has done a lot of work uh, with the abalone community in Central and Northern California, the di- recreational divers, uh, right. collecting data, doing management strategy evaluations, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, learning what the next steps forward should be uh, and working with the department. And um, right now, it's just going to take some time to recover after that, that big warm water hit. Yeah. All right. Good. Good answer. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Hey, when we come back, we got more of your phone calls and we're going to check in with the man, your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hansen's reports coming up. You stay tuned. Lots of great Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. We're on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the radio network.
It's a fact of life in Southern California, hard water. And if you have a pool, your towel shows it. Here comes San Diego Pool Towel Cleaning to the rescue. With their specialized equipment, SD Pool Towel Cleaning can safely remove the stubborn calcium deposits most pool owners struggle with. SD Pool Towel Cleaning can make your tile look bright and clean, almost like new again. High pressure pool maintenance cleaning can damage grout, stone, and dislodged tiles. San Diego Pool Tile Cleaning uses a low pressure media blasting technique to protect your pool surface from damage and yield fantastic results. So stop making excuses for your stained tiles on your pool. Make them look like new again with San Diego Pool Tile Cleaning. Check their website at sdpooltilecleaning.com and let their professional staff rejuvenate your pool tile. When it comes to professional swimming pool tile cleaning service, there is only one name you can trust, San Diego Pool Tile Cleaning. Check sdpooltilecleaning.com. Filet knives shouldn't be disposable. Introducing Aftco Filet knives that are built to last. Designed in collaboration with Boker Germany, Aftco knives feature 4116 German stainless steel bonded with titanium nitride to ensure optimum corrosion resistance and exceptional edge retention. A non-slip TPR handle maintains a firm grip when processing game fish. Premium in every sense, Aftco fillet knives are available in multiple length options to provide the right tool that gets the job done season after season. Fillet knives from Aftco. Any fish, any water. When you put on a pair of Maui Gym sunglasses, the world begins to look different. Colors are more vivid. Contrast is clearer. Details are crisper. Wherever your vision leads you, beauty follows. With polarized lenses that eliminate glare and enhance color, Maui Gym sunglasses won't change the world. They'll change the way you see it. Color, clarity, detail. Maui Gym. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long range fishing experience. A spring eight day, summer five day, or a fly down fly back 11 day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top of the line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. A top fleet and superb fishing is what Seaforth Sport Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, it's no wonder Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, El Gato Dos, Pride, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing for charters or regular open party schedule. Check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cookup. Okay, as promised, it's time to find out what's biting out there. Your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hansen, is standing by with that fishdope.com report. Good morning, Dave. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Rick. Hey, what a great week of fishing again. That bluefin yeah. is in u.s waters and it's dying to go to your house for dinner and <laughs> everybody's scoring on that bluefin it's pretty insane bite even even the world famous todd manser got in on the bite on accident he was fishing calico bass at clemeni and they ended up catching 140 pounder on their way home from clemeni on the straight course to dana point that fish is Sweet. roaming around all over between catalina clemeni Backside of Clemente, all the way down the ridge, down to the corner. It's it's made it up into the United States, and now it just wants to go to your house for dinner, Rick. <clears throat> we're, we'll, we're welcoming then it in. Yeah, bring him. <laughs> then there's plenty of it and around. Then yeah, and then as far as bass fishing and everything, that's all biting. They're still barracuda to catch up on the horseshoe. And uh, calico bass are biting up and down the coast. Catalina, Clemente, there's lots of yellowtail. One day they bite real well, then a couple days off, and then again. So there's plenty of fish to catch. You just have to get out there and go fishing, guys. we got beautiful weather. I know it's hotter than heck up there. So get out on a boat. Get out there where it's cool and go fishing. Yeah. 
So Ricky just told me that he's got a new white bag that you might be interested in. <laughs> when Dave started mentioning it, now we we have always killed reli- always carried reliable bags, still do, still love them. We also just took on a new brand of kill bag, and as soon as I heard Dave like his comment, which is always my favorite, <laughs> everything wants wants to jump in the white bag. We have a new one. They're called uh, the company's called Opa, uh, or the the bag line is called Opa, and I think the company's called Sunfish Gear. Anyways, we just started carrying them at the shop, and they are really cool. Uh, um, so especially for guys that are fishing the flyers or, or not. So it's a, it's a great kill bag, like everything, you know, they didn't reinvent the wheel, just a, a very good bag, but they're a hundred percent, uh, uh, leak proof, like guaranteed, no, leak no, proof. no seep whatsoever, but, um, they have an interior waterproof pocket. So if you're like a skiff guy, like I am, that doesn't necessarily have a ton of room. There's an interior pocket. That's a hundred percent, uh, leak proof also. So you could throw your sandwiches and drinks in your kill bag, put them in the interior pocket, zip them up, and you could have a, a bloody fish bag with ice that none of that, you know, so obviously everything's still cold, but it won't, it won't like, seep into where your food is. Or if you're a guy taking flying fish, you could put your flyers inside the pocket, not get them waterlogged, but still keep them cold with their ice. They're really cool. Nice, so anyways, yeah. Nice. I just, so you have those at Fisherman's Landing Capital. Yeah, we started carrying them this week. They're really, yeah. really, same virtual price. We still carry both brands, still love them both, but a, a really cool option. Um, that we just started carrying. I really, so they, really like them. there you them. go, Dave, your white bag. Yes, I met those guys at ICAST last year. We were supposed to work together, and then you know what happened. So, great. I'm glad you got them in there, Rick. Good. They, all the fish want to get in that white bag because the water is really hot right now. It's up to <laughs> 72, 73. Cold. They want to get in there where the ice is. Chill yeah. it out. So yeah. good. Yeah. Glad sure. you have those. Yeah, no kidding. And, of course, fishdope.com, always your best source. I was reading the reports today from yesterday, just fantastic fishing all around. Sounds like San Clemente to wherever. It's really good fishing. They give you the bait reports, find out where you can get started where you can get sardine, chovy, everything is right there at fishdope.com. 20 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using the code hookup now. Lowercase, no space, hookup now. And Dave, how do we find you? I tell people about your videos all the time. In yeah. fact, somebody on my dock the other day was like, I want to learn this bluefin tuna fishery, how to fish a kite, how to fish a balloon and everything. I said, yoursaltwaterguide.com. Subscribe and learn, right? <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Yeah, yoursaltwaterguide.com. Guys, we cover every aspect of fishing in Southern California. There's a video series on each type of fishing. Check it out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be gnarly. It's going to cost you $4.99 to become a member, but I guarantee it's worth it. Yeah, no question about it. Thanks, Dave. Great job, Dave. Yoursaltwaterguide.com, and we will talk to you next Sunday. All right, I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Have a great week of killing fish. All right. Thanks, Dave. No calicos, though. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's go ahead and jump into the phones, Rick. You got it. I like that you uh, he's, you, you push the button before, you know, so there's no rebuttal. Dave on, is uh, like public enemy number one when it comes to calicos, Lyle, by the way. Public I enemy mean, number one, period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and jump back in the phones. You got it. Mark and Lakeside's up next on Let's Talk Hookup. What's up, Mark? Hey, how's it going, guys? I just Great. got a two-part question. I was wondering, uh, between San Diego Bay and Mission Bay, the the size and the spotties is just totally polar opposites. You're lucky if you would catch a 14-incher in San Diego Bay. And on Mission Bay, they've just got shoulders on them. And then do these bass, do they spawn like freshwater bass and, and bed spawn, uh, the spotties? A couple of good questions. Yeah. Great, great questions. Yeah, there is. I've, I've noticed that for a long time. There is a size difference between Mission Bay and San Diego Bay. Um, San Diego Bay and the back bay, you tend to catch lots of smaller grade fish. And then as you move out towards the deeper channels, you'll, you'll pick up the bigger ones. And then in Mission Bay, you, you get a little bit better sizes just kind of everywhere. So, so yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, uh, Why is that? What was the other question? Uh, Other question was uh, spawning, spawning styles. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, the spotties don't, uh, don't nest up the way, uh, like large mouths or small mouths do, um, spotted bay bass, uh, kelp bass, sand bass, they, um, release their, their gametes into the water column and they usually have, uh, spawning aggregations. Now sand bass have giant spawning aggregations historically with millions of fish, um, in, in pretty consistent locations every year. 
Uh, calicos are a little bit different. They're a little less predictable in time and space, and they they spawn in the kelp beds. And then spotties, they don't leave the bays at all. All the tagging work we've done has shown uh, that they pretty much stay in the same bay their entire lives. And they they may form, there's a chance they may form spawning aggregations within the bays, but we need to do a little bit more research just to figure out uh, when and where that happens and, and uh, what time of year, et cetera. Wow. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Good question. Spotted bay bass, cool. one of the great catches of, of the bays here in Southern California, no doubt. Captain Art Taylor aboard the Searchers on the line. Good morning, Art. Hey, good morning, Pete. Just want to uh, check in. We had that day and a half trip with uh, Let's Talk hooked up last week, and um, we sure saw lots of fish, and uh, we ended up landing a few. We had a 200-pounder, and then six fish over a hundred and uh you know that was pretty exciting when that was going on we sure yeah. saw lots of fish plenty of fish out there uh towards san clemente island that didn't bite we saw them starting at 11 o'clock in the morning but anyway just want to say thanks for your support and thanks for allowing us to participate and uh, we have another day and a half with let's talk hook up in in late august there that's got some room on it and just wanted to say thank you yeah, no, Dave uh, Dave uh, Dolan calling yesterday gave us a report on the on the trip and uh, yeah, thanks to Gamakatsu, Shimano, Afco for providing a lot of great prizes for all the people aboard. Nice light load on the searcher and uh, seems like everybody had the chance of a lifetime for a fish of a lifetime on the searcher that day. And Art, I know uh, searcher just came in here to Fisherman's Landing off of a three day trip. How did Mike? How did Mike do? Mike did great. He had one really good day down there at the, you know, uh, 160 miles with, you know, action all day long with yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, yellowtail, and dorado. There's, there's a lot of fish down that way for a three-day trip, and oh, man. and uh, there's uh, there's great potential for the future. Absolutely, yep. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, uh, Art, I know I just, you. Art, I want to say thanks for. Um, give a shout out to Art and the Searcher because they they participate in the tuna um, length frequency data collection program that we've been running for several years now. So, <laughs> hi Art and thank you. Thank you, Elena, and we're happy to help. And uh, we just filled out a sheet this morning with some yellowfin and bluefin tuna for you, so we'll get that in the sack drawer at the landing. Awesome. Thank you Sweet. again. Uh, all right. Hey Art, if somebody wants to come on a trip, do you have space available on the Searcher? We do. We have a really uh, unique opportunity, a three-day trip over a weekend, uh, the 23rd of July through the 26th of July. Ooh, uh, yeah. We're going to run the trip. It's going to have a light load, and they can book through Fisherman's Landing. And then we have a four-day trip that uh, has openings on it right after that, the 26th through the 30th. Uh, so they can check searchersportfishing.com or fisherman'slanding.com for all the trips that have space available on it. Thank you. Ca Captain Art Taylor, what a fine operation aboard the searcher. Great food, great crew, and they catch fish, yeah. most importantly. Thanks, Art. Appreciate it very Thank much, you. and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks for letting us host a trip on the boat, and we'll look forward to the next one. All right. All right. Let Phone are packed up solid, man. Let's jump right back into them. Talk to Don. He's calling us from Woodland Hills this morning. Hi, Don. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. Uh, you couldn't have aligned that introduction to me better, Rick. Art, um, if he's still on the line, or at least he's listening, I was out on a three-day over the July 4th weekend, and it's been about four years since I've been on the searcher. They just knocked it out of the park. Um, fishing was, was a little tough at times, but I came back with 11 yellowtail and one yellowfin. We got a few bluefin and just put the time on the water, and we did, we did well. It was a great trip and a great group of people, and the crew is just the best there is in the business. And the boat's super comfortable. That the classic wood design it keeps it quiet. I, I really like fishing aboard the searcher. It, it, it really is a good boat, and the, the food was great, and they handled the the whole social distancing thing really, really well, and everybody was cooperative and uh, going to find a way to get back on them again this year. There you uh, go. That's great, Don. Yeah, Glad to hear you had a good indeed. trip. Glad you had it. And like I've said over and over again, I feel that it's safer on the boats today than it has been just because of the, the amount, the efforts that they go to make sure that the passengers are, and the crew are safe. Yep, no doubt about it. Yeah, for sure. Don, thanks a lot for the call this morning. 
That's great. All right, how about we jump right back into them and talk to John. He's calling us from Vista this morning. Hi, John. Welcome to the show. Morning, guys. It's a great show. Great, great guest. Very so informative. It's incredible. I just want to give you a kind of a Cabo update, how, how well they're doing and I'm trying to accommodate everybody and how cleanly they've got everything. They really need people back down there. Uh, their economy's horribly hurt like everybody else's. Everybody's afraid to fly, but the flights are great. The uh, accommodations are obviously great. I missed the information if they, when you talked to Rancho Leonero this morning, if they said they closed the harbor at all. Uh, they have had uh, minor closures. I believe there was one last week where that when that hurricane was near, uh, they had a they had a, a closure for a day, I believe. But uh, other than that, it's been open. We fished uh, three days. I got 14 marlin. I got 10 marlin one day. It was about the craziest I've wow. ever seen in my life. Wow. And, Incredible. Uh, but it was great great fishing, great weather. So that's about it, really. Head south. Thanks a lot for the yeah, tip. Appreciate call. the call this morning. Bruce and Lemon Grove is up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Bruce. Hey, good morning. Um, my question is 200-pound um, um, yellowfin tuna. How old is that fish? <laughs> uh tuna grow really really quickly yellowfin and bluefin both um a two i mean there's a lot of variability around uh age and size but a 200 pound fish could only be maybe three years old i mean they on grow a yellowfin wow yeah that's what, crazy. what about a bluefin lyle three maybe four years old i would say about the same about really the same. wow yeah yeah. Now, yeah. now those, uh, you know, those standout, exceptionally giant, you know, blue fins that they see on the East Coast and thousand pounders, do those fish uh, grow at a greater rate or do they just tend to live longer than the elephants do? I know that's not necessarily your, your world of expertise, but, you know, you're our guy, so we're asking anyways. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to go back and do some homework after this. <laughs> um, I, think, I think the blue fin uh, between the East Coast and the West Coast have – fairly similar growth rates. Um, I'm not sure how old one of those really big thousand pound fish is. Uh, I'll have to look back on that and, and get back to you guys. Um, yeah. uh, prob- probably, I mean, I would, I would presume a lot older than, you know, the 300 pound large fish that we get here. Um, but, you know, I have some old, old fishing records of big bluefin off our coast too, far bigger than 300 pounds. I think we have a few records of uh, six, seven, eight hundred pound bluefin in the Pacific as well. Right. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Tim in San Diego's got up next. Tim, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. And let me be Bart for a second. Hey, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Hi. funny. Hi. Hi, Elena. No, that was Bart. You know, just being Bart. Hey. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, when you or, or when you fish for the uh, for the uh, billfish. Are you and and you say a thousand feet are are um, downriggers mandatory or is that how you're doing it? I mean, I couldn't see any other way you could couldn't fish it with a big chunk of lead. I mean, how else? So I mean, so how, how do they do those big those deep set buoy gears, Lyle? Uh, well, the deep set buoy gears is a little bit is well, it's a lot different than how you might target them off your own boat. Uh, the deep set buoy gear has um, a float at the surface. And then another float that's subsurface, and then the line goes straight down to a weight. I think it's about a 10-pound weight. And at the very bottom, there's only a couple of hooks at the bottom. That's that's the standard gear configuration. And when you get bit, the swordfish are diving down into deep water, and when they uh, after they eat, they swim back up to the surface. So when you get bit, the swordfish carries that weight up. And because it's carrying the weight up, the subsurface float hits the surface. So the way they know their bit is they see the the main float at the top, and then the, the float that subsurface comes up as well. So then there's two floats. And when you see two floats, you know your bit. But that's with the commercial gear type. With with and it's uh, not with, it's it's very similar on the on the sport fishing side, right, Rick? Yeah, I mean, you know, the success of the deep set buoy gear is what really inspired most of the guys to start recreationally trying. And obviously, the gear is just an adaptation of that. It it is it is quite similar. I would say the most common guy that's do, hitting it hard is fishing one rod on a float, almost identical to what Lyle is describing, S- slightly different, but a hundred percent same principle. 
Um, and then usually another rod that is just in a rod holder on the boat that you're, you know, you're just looking for a wiggle in the tip. And uh, they do fish, you know, like you had mentioned, Tim, with a, a lot of a weight. I would say uh, recreational guys tend to use between 6 and 10 pounds, depending on the amount of drift and wind, with 8 pounds being the most common. And it's usually uh, attached to the line via a, a relatively easy to take on and off like a long line style clip and you know as that that weight can be as far as a hundred feet away from the lure so as the the weight comes near you just reach over unhook the long line clip drop into a bucket and you just stay attached to the fish the whole time yeah so that's pretty much the the, the deal there hey thanks a lot for the call this morning it's 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 really fascinating let's try and sneak in another one rick yeah how about rich calling from bradley you got a quick question for us rich yes i do uh, we've seen the uh, boom and collapse of the cannery business for um, the forage base, mainly sardines and anchovies, and I'm wondering how much work has been done to develop a management technique and how much of, of the boom and bust depends upon just the cyclic nature of, the, of these forage fish. That's a good great, question. Yeah. great question. That's a tough one to answer yeah. in short time, but a great question. I know. I know. Anchovies and sardines are are hugely cyclical based on oceanographic conditions and that's really what drives the the size of the populations and there is a ton of work being in being done in both the state and federal fisheries management sectors and SAC has been a huge part of that uh, working with our live bait fleet to make sure that our uh, that our party boat fleet is supported by a, a viable live bait fishery so there are a lot of moving parts and it's been really uh, really successful all right good good yeah, answer well hey thanks a lot for the call this morning I want to remind you be sure to check out that new video on our youtube channel let's talk hookup radio show youtube you can link that on the let's talk hookup website let's talk hookup.com on the top just click the little red button that says youtube and check out the kingfisher charters uh work uh the uh, video that uh, we shot up there, and then Tommy P did a great job. He really did, a really good job yeah. of uh, of putting it together, and uh, uh, it really gives you the whole gist of the Kingfisher experience in Sitka, Alaska. So check that out. Uh, it's about a ten minute video on our YouTube channel. Let's talk hookup radio show. Hey, when we come back, we're gonna find out what lucky anglers got himself a trip on the San Diego out of Seaforth. You stay tuned. More Let's Talk Hookup coming your way on the Let's Talk Hookup app and radio network. Rock Cod Rick here for Adventure and Camping, where they bring the adventure to you. If you enjoy camping in the eastern Sierra but don't own an RV or a trailer or simply don't want the hassle, let Adventure and Camping park it for you. It's simple. Check out their website, adventureandcamping.com. Select from over 75 campgrounds they serve. Decide on a trailer floor plan that fits your needs. Request a quote and your desired vacation dates. Then just show up and start your adventure. Dallas and I did exactly that, and it was incredible. We chose a beautiful mammoth area campground, Adventures and Camping. Camping delivered the trailer to our spot. We just showed up and enjoyed a clean, spacious trailer without any of the hassle. When it comes time to go home, we just closed the door and drove away. It doesn't get any easier. If you enjoy camping in the Eastern Sierra but don't want the hassle, Adventure in Camping is for you. Check out adventureincamping.com for details. Make sure you mention Rock Cod Rick sent you for a special 20% off offer, but this special won't last, so go to adventureincamping.com today. Hey, it's time for the 30-second Power Pro Seminar. Here's the hot tip for those of us that like to fish with small reels for big fish. Fill your spools with Power Pro Max Quattro. It's 25% thinner than standard Power Pro. That means you're going to get more line on that small reel. Plus, you can fly line your bait more effectively. Here's another tip about Power Pro Max Quattro. Your casting distance will increase in addition to increasing your spool capacity. So downsize your tackle and use Power Pro Max Quattro. Check PowerPro.com for more information. All of us at the American Angler family want to express appreciation to our regular passengers that fish with us year after year and to the new anglers that came out this last season. We realize how precious your vacation time is, and we are truly grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with us. It's important that your experience is memorable, from the moment you call the office to the time you step off the boat. Hi, I'm Lori. Call me at the office, 619 223 5414 or check us out at AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com. Come fishing with the American Angler family and make a memory. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want 
want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend CalStar at fine tackle stores everywhere. All right, it's time. The big winner going fishing on the San Diego out of Sea Force Sport Fishing on this great full day trip. Tim in San Diego. Tim, congratulations. You're going to love fishing with Captain Ryan, Captain Matt. Yeah, indeed. And uh, Lion Elena, great job, man. Never enough time oh. to answer all the questions. Phones have been solid the whole time, and they want you back. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, you Love guys did a back. great job. Very fun. Yeah, and uh, continue Thanks your so uh, successful work. And uh, Lyle, are we still going to see you at the Trout Pond? Oh, yeah. I'll be there every year. Count me in. Yeah, there <laughs> awesome. you go. That's awesome. And Elena, of course, thanks for all your hard work uh, with Sack and Ken Frankie and all, all that stuff. And we'll see you down on the boats, right? We will. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot, Lyle and Elena. Appreciate it. And we'll d- definitely look forward to having having you back uh, on Let's Talk Hookup in the in the near future. Um, you know, uh, and then, of course, the Barnacle, Elena, if you want that uh, great security system for your boat, um, you can get a hold of, of Barnacle and then she'll put they'll put you in touch with uh, Elena if you're in San Diego or Southern California area and, and get you hooked up on that system. Right. Yeah, we could talk fisheries and Barnacle. <laughs> Fisheries and Barnacle. <laughs> two, for right. one. two for one. <laughs> two for one. Perfect. All right, guys. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. Hey, thanks a lot to Dave in the studio for all he does. He's a busy guy in there. I know we appreciate that. And of course, Adam, for all he does on our Let's Talk Look Up app, download that app at Let's Talk Look Up app if you haven't already. And uh, listen to Let's Talk Hook Up anywhere you want to go. And speaking of listening, next Saturday and Sunday, great weekend of Soj. Next Saturday, the cast man, Richard Castaneda from Cast Tours, will be with us here. And then next Sunday, Danny Wade, the man, the yellowtail surface iron expert, will be here in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hook Up. Thanks for listening today. We'll see you next week right back here on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and radio network. <laughs>